Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this special bulletin. The trailer for Star Wars Outlaws is released, and like I talked about in my last video, in my opinion, the facial animations look like something from Bethesda, bug Thesda, whatever you want to call it. Complete and total lack of any sort of emotion. The storyline looks rather cookie-cutter, generic at best. And, well, not really, nothing really impressive about the trailer or the graphics or the characters or anything like that got to me. Nothing struck me. So the only thing that's going to save this game is word of mouth. They're going to have to show some sort of spectacular gameplay or something interesting. But more and more came out. Apparently, there was a few people that didn't really care for the trailer. We're going to talk about this when Star Wars Outlaws, this article from Barclays, Star Wars, Out Star Wars Outlaws. Lead writer, the Maven of Filth, Nikki Foy's maybe Maven of Filth. Uh, I bet there's a story there. Hmm. Social media protected and website password protected as story trailer gets huge negative reactions. Now, why on earth would that happen? How could people be so, I don't know, how could you give such a negative reaction? My goodness. Story trailer was being lampooned. Ubisoft, I bet you can trust them, can't you, ladies and gentlemen? Right here, you got the Pre-order for the Kessel Runner bonus pack. Three-day early access. I went ahead and checked out the different uh, bundles you can get on the PlayStation 5. And holy Christ, I'm going to get into that one. Ubisoft released the game's first official story trailer on April 9th. And it's received a ton of negative reaction. I wouldn't say a ton. Uh, as of writing the article, 25,000 upvotes, 26,000 down. I went over and checked it out myself. Where is it? Oh, look right here. Yeah, 27 up, 30k down. So, yeah, it looks like um, fans are letting their voices be heard. People are losing interest. Probably doesn't help that Ubisoft's doing the game, so what can you expect? Side quest, side quest, side quest. My goodness, many of the top-rated comments are a bit negative and encourage others to not pre-order the game. And I will agree with that 100%, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Stop pre-ordering these games. Um... Uh, to, more often than not, we're getting video games. Kyle puts it brilliantly, and I'm not going to steal his line. I'm just going to you know, go watch Kyle. C-Y-A-E-L. Go watch him. He's a fantastic YouTuber. Funny as hell. Talented with the music. But he calls his fans beta testers. And at the first I thought it was funny, but then I realized how disturbingly appropriate that moniker is. Gamers are becoming beta testers for games like this. This games as a service, and regardless of, I mean, you can go all the way back to uh, No Man's Sky when that game came out, and it was an absolute shit show. But they continued working on the game, and the game is nothing like it was when it was released. It's fantastic. Does that excuse their behavior at the beginning? Absolutely not. There are some people who, to this day, refuse to give Hello Games any of their money. They refuse to go back to the game. Same thing with Cyberpunk 2077. That was an absolute dumpster fire when it came out. Buggy mess, glitches, couldn't even run on your standard PlayStation 4. Barely ran on a Pro. Crashed every two hours. I talk about it all the time. It kept me going, but you can't expect everyone to feel the same way. And again, just like No Man's Sky, people will not go back and try out Cyberpunk 2077, even though the expansion... Phantom Liberty is absolutely fantastic. CD Projekt Red did them dirty, and they will not go back. And that happens more often, and uh, probably may need to happen more often than it does. But we get, we've gotten to the point as gamers, where a game comes out claiming to be ready, claiming to be done, missing features that get added later with a patch. Oh, we'll just patch it day one. And... More often than not, gamers tolerate it. Tolerate it enough that it's not changing the industry. But let's go ahead and get back to this article before I go off on a massive tangent rant. The current top comment reads, quote, Never believe Ubisoft until you try the game yourself. How about this? I have a better idea. Never believe, insert developer here, until you get an opinion from someone you trust, a few someones you trust. Let someone else spend their money. Let a content creator that you trust, that you believe, that has the relatively same interests as far as video games go. Let them try it out first. See how it is. Avoid spoilers, of course. 
get their opinion first before you go dumping money, especially considering the price tags. Holy crap. Another mocks the trailer's writing. Yeah. You're new to this world. Come back when you're not. Translation, go do side quests. Ubisoft is apparently famous for doing side quests for Assassin's Creed. Side quests, side quests, side quests. And there's another thing that I heard them doing. I believe one of their Assassin's Creed game was selling, um, I guess, convenience items. Only to discover later on, oh, you don't need to buy them. But people started feeling like quest progression, not quest progression, level progression was being throttled later on in the game. If they did it for one, they can do it for more. A third reads, vote with your wallet, everyone. I'm a firm believer in that. Remember, this is Ubisoft. Don't pre-order. I don't think that statement should be, I guess, uh, restricted to only Ubisoft. Don't pre-order these games. Mm -hmm. Remember, never pre-order from Ubisoft. Never pre-order from any developer, regardless of your opinion of them. Wait for someone else to do it. One person stated, Ubisoft told me to be comfortable not... Oh, that's true. Be comfortable not owning their games. I'm going to be very, com very comfortable not buying this one. Oh my goodness. Ubisoft and Disney. Two companies that have gotten... That haven't gotten any money from me in years. Join forces to not get any more money from me. Fantastic quote. Per Blasio 2355. Ochirip. Ochirip? Ochirip. I'm going to go with Ochirip. The villain in this trailer is the only person that actually sounds like an actor. Yeah, some of the dialogue is rather flat to say the least. Oh my goodness, it goes on and on. Remember, no pre-orders. Do this with all games, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let those pre-order bundles get to you. Three-day early access if you pre-order. It's a single-player game. It's a single-player game. Why would you pre-order? Hmm, what's this? As the game story trailer was roasted, the lead writer, Nikki Foy, who describes herself as the Maven of Filth, whatever that means, interesting choice of... Oh, okay. Oh, has protected her social media account. Why? What were people sending her? You can see a screenshot below that her ex-account is now protected and only approved followers. My goodness, why would anyone attack the writers? Don't be a douchebag. Don't be a douche nozzle. Don't do that. It's unclear when she password protected her website and locked down her account. An archive of the website reveals it was still public on June 29th, 2023. So any time between then and now. Where in detail, she was a script writer on Far, Far Cry 6, narrative designer on Watchdog Legions, also a writer, yada, yada, yada. So my other problem with this oh-so-wonderful game, let's take a look at this right here. I wish I could show you the screenshot. Somebody posted this on Twitter, and I thought it rather odd because they were showing a $169 price tag. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's a bit ridiculous. So I went ahead and checked out for myself. There are three different bundles. The standard bundle, $70 price tag for a AAA game, of course. Then you got the gold edition for $110. I didn't check to see what comes with that. I believe it's the season pass and early access. But the Ultimate Edition, now this is a single-player game. Ultimate Edition of $130. Okay, that's a bit ridiculous. You get the game. You get a season pass. Why? Why do we have a season pass? Why are we so comfortable, so accepting of season passes for single-player games? Well, you don't have to buy it. Yes, but you miss out on whatever cosmetics, whatever cool-looking stuff. And I ask again, why? Is that in a single player game? Is this going to be another online only atrocity as we've gotten in the past? It's a single player game. There has been absolutely nothing to imply that it will be more than that. Nothing in the story trailer, nothing in the gameplay trailer. You have a protagonist who is a particular character, a single character, one with a name. What? Would it need a season pass for? Sabak Shark Bundle? Don't even know what that is. It just makes me think of Grand Theft Auto. Shark cards. Is that going to be necessary? Infiltrator Bundle. Digital art book. Okay, cool. And three-day early access with pre-order. I made the mistake 
of spending $30 on Starfield to get the early access. I played it through early access. I be I finished the game. No, I did not do all the side missions and the side quests and all the story stuff. And I haven't touched it since. I finished it in a week, probably about 30, 40 hours, maybe more, maybe 50. And I have not touched it since. By comparison, Cyberpunk 2077, I've put a thousand plus hours, multiple playthroughs since then. And I didn't have to spend anything extra outside of the expansion pack. And that was a single player game that caught my interest, regardless of the buggy mess that it was when it first came out. Somebody help me out. Help me out in the chat. In the chat. I fucking said it again. Hi, Steve. Let me know in the comments. What would you possibly need three day early access for a single player game except for clout? Why would you need a season pass? For a game like this unless it's some sort of annual pass where you get future expansions for cheaper they're getting your money up front and out of the way with the promise of future expansions future editions future downloads for this game i wouldn't even recommend pre-ordering much less than spending 130 dollars on anything coming out of ubisoft but i think it's fun what's going what is it going to take for Star Wars fans, for video game fans, to put any faith, first of all, in Ubisoft, second of all, in any sort of Star Wars game, especially with, well, you, you make your own decision on the look of the character. This particular scene right there, my goodness, does not do the character justice whatsoever. There are some other scenes in the trailer where the main character, Tess, I believe her name is, whatever it is, Vest Tess, where doesn't look too bad. This one right here, go back and watch the trailer absolute abomination but that's enough tangents for today let me know what you think in the comments what could possibly justify needing a three-day early access for pre-orders do not pre-order what justifies a season pass in a single player game but let me know in the comments leave a like leave a dislike do all those nifty th little things us youtubers beg you to do and i hope to see you on the next one